Welcome to Walking in the Word, the biblical teaching arm of the Women World Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Julie Jenkins, and I'm so glad that you have joined us today as we continue our walk through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. For the next several weeks, we will be looking at many parables that Jesus presented. A parable is a story using everyday imaging that is meant to teach a spiritual truth. Parables can be difficult to understand because their meaning is veiled. And as we find out in our reading today, that was intentional. We will look at this further in a bit, but for now, I should highlight that, like the rest of the Bible, the true intended meaning of the parables told by Jesus cannot be understood without guidance from God himself. If you are trying to develop a habit of reading the Bible but are having a difficult time understanding it, I would encourage you to seek God in prayer before you begin your study. After all, if you were reading a book written by a friend and had a question, wouldn't you call the author and ask what he or she meant as she wrote? I want to encourage you that you do know the author of the Bible, and you can approach him at any time. With that said, let's begin in prayer. Dear Most Holy God, thank you for always meeting us where we are and for always providing us with the teaching that you need us to hear. God, I pray that you will be with my words today. Allow your teaching and illumination of your word to pour through me. Father, we want to grow closer to you, and we want to glorify your name. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will accomplish both through each person listening today. Thank you for sending us your word and for being present with us to interpret your meaning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, today we are beginning with the parable of the sower, or some call it the parable of the soils, which is recorded in Matthew 13, verses 1 through 23, Matthew 4, verses 1 through 25, and Luke 8, verses 4 through 18. As we go through this study together today, you will notice that this parable is presented in two different ways, with an interlude explaining why. As we open, we see Jesus begins speaking to a crowd, and what a crowd it was. Mark begins in chapter 4, verse 1 in the New Living Translation. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lakeshore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into a boat. Then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the shore. (laughs) The crowd got so large that Jesus had to get into a boat. (laughs) He was like a magnet. And he always found a way to make the situation work. Locals in the area set this scene at an inlet about a mile from Capernaum called the Cove of Parables. In this location, the land slopes down like a natural amphitheater, providing natural acoustics so that the whole crowd would have been able to hear Jesus from the boat. Meanwhile, the water between the boat and the shore provided a natural separation, like a stage, allowing all to not only hear, but also to see Jesus. I just have to pause here for us to take notice of the providence of God. How many times have things worked out in a way that could be relegated to coincidence? 
But when we look with eyes of faith, we can see clearly that our God is in control. I have a friend who calls these coincidences God incidences. You probably know that this podcast comes out on Wednesdays, which means that Tuesdays are generally the day I buckle down at my computer in preparation. Well, this week, I'm a little behind. And as I sit here, the sun is going down on Tuesday. (laughs) And yet, as I remember my day, I thank God for his provision. As I was picking up my son from school today, I heard a large crash behind me. And when I looked in my rearview mirror, the two cars behind me had collided. Even as I whispered a prayer for the safety of those involved and I could see that no one was hurt, I noticed both drivers pulling over to exchange insurance information. And I thought, they have a long, unexpected delay in their day. And as I sit here writing with the sun going down, I am thanking God for his protection, the God incidents, protecting my car so that I am able to finish what he has ordained for me to do today. How good is our God? Well, the natural amphitheater and the boat on the water where Jesus found himself was God's perfect provision so that all could hear. The fact that you are listening now on whatever device you are listening is also God's perfect provision. There are no coincidences with God. There is something that he wants you to know today. Jesus from his boat began teaching the crowd in the form of a parable. You've probably heard this parable before, but allow me to read it from the book of Mark. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed and he scattered it across his field. Some of the seed fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so that they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a 100 times as much as had been planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So this is what Jesus presented to the crowd. And while it was an engaging story and one that they could easily picture and relate to, they must have walked away with some questions. They could picture the farmer's task walking along a field with a crossbody satchel generously throwing out seed. This was a common occurrence, an analogy that they could relate to. They could also understand that while the seed was positioned to grow, the fields there were less than desirable. Walking was the mode of transportation, so even those who weren't farmers would have understood that some seed would have fallen on a path to be trampled. They had all walked by the fields. And the terrain of the area was rocky, so even in the so-called fields, Sometimes the soil was shallow, just a thin layer of topsoil covering the rock. And who doesn't understand about weeds? These were not modern day farmers with proven scientific products and equipment readily available to get rid of the weeds. So my point is the listeners would have understood the story itself. But I'm guessing many thought, so And though the story was engaging, they must have had questions. Who was the farmer? What did the seed represent? And then the final blow. Anyone with ears to hear should listen 
and understand. (laughs) I can imagine the crowd muttering and touching their ears as they walked away, but I don't understand. What does that, does that mean that I don't have ears? Well, even the disciples were likely perplexed as they later asked, as Matthew records, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? The disciples wanted to know why Jesus spoke in these riddles, but I'm guessing they also wanted to understand the riddle, but didn't even know how to ask. I love this because despite the confusion they may have felt, they went to Jesus with a question they could formulate. And Jesus met them where they were. Not only did he tell them why he spoke in riddles, he explained the parable to them simply because they were seeking to understand. So Jesus first answers the question they had asked, why he spoke in parables. He responds that he uses parables so that those who listen will be given an abundance of knowledge and will understand the mysteries that are being revealed. Through these stories, Jesus is offering divine revelation of God's kingdom, available to those who are seeking to hear from God through the words of Jesus. Suddenly, we understand that a parable is so much more than a story. But on the contrary, Jesus adds, To those who have walled off their hearts from his words, those without ears, the true meaning of the parables is obscured. And after Jesus Jesus explains why he speaks in parables, because the disciples were earnestly seeking to understand, Jesus explained the actual parable to them which is also a treat for us. He explains, the seed that is sprinkled by the farmer represents the word of God. God will see to it that every individual will hear his message, but whether or not that seed grows and how it grows depends on the condition of the hearer's heart. The seed that fell on the footpath, Jesus explains, represents those who hear the message about the kingdom, but don't seek to understand it. Just like birds who stand in wait for food to fall, Satan stands in wait to devour the knowledge of Christ from us. Even though we were created by God himself to belong to him and to love him, Next, the seed that fell on the rocky soil germinated, but did not take root and was burned up by the sun. The earth on which we live was taken over by the devil and sin, and it is no longer the ideal environment to grow and thrive, especially as a Christian. But when we do seek to follow God, he will see to it that we grow. He will provide the right amount of light, water, and nutrients for us to grow exponentially. Third, the seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear the word, but allow it to be crowded out by worries and the lure of wealth. The ultimate goal of a Christian is to grow fruit as we become more and more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But when we become distracted, though we may stay alive, we often don't produce the fruit that we were intended to. And finally, the seed that fell on the good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word. They cling to him. They cling to his guidance and his protection. And as a result, produce a harvest that is multiplied over and over. We need to make note that whatever journey each seed undergoes, whether it's trampled underfoot, grows without deep roots only to be burned by the sun, if it grows steady but does not flourish due to the weeds around it, or if it flourishes in abundance, 
each of those journeys take time. They don't happen quickly. Each takes a lifetime, in fact. We cannot be fully who God intends each of us to be without the passage of time and without our utter dependence on God himself. And God is patient. So while we don't grow and flourish immediately, neither do we fall away with immediacy. God continues to pursue us for our lifetime. Well, one thing that theologians will warn about regarding parables is that they are meant to speak a truth. Parables are not to be dissected or extrapolated, and they are not perfect analogies. This is just one of the reasons why we need God's help for our clear understanding of his word. So regarding this parable, I do want to make note that while a seed cannot change the location of the soil it is in, we do have the potential to ask God to change the soil of our our hearts. We will go through many seasons in our lifetime, and we should never assume that because we went through a season where the weeds got the best of us, that God cannot miraculously kill those weeds, allowing us to flourish in our God-given purpose. And if you feel like you once had a great start as a follower of Christ, but have been burned from the hot sun and the lack of nutrients in the soil of your heart, know that God is longing to take your withered self and give you new life. Even if you have been snatched by the devil, remember, God has the final word. And if you come to him in submission and repentance, giving your life to Christ, God and all the angels above will dance for joy. If God is speaking to you right now and the seed of his is his word is falling on your heart, just waiting to grow, but you've not accepted Christ, please know this is your chance. God is doing a miraculous work in you right now. He is fertilizing the soil of your heart, just longing for you to take root in him. Will you? Will will you pray with me? Dear most holy God, I give you my heart. I ask you to enrich it with your love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. God, I am sorry for those times I have turned away from you and I turn to you now. Jesus Christ, I thank you for holding your arms open to me and I willingly run into them, accepting eternal life in your presence as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer with me, welcome to God's kingdom. Expect the soil to feel different. Expect to grow. Expect to see God's glory like you never have before as you walk through this Christmas season. And expect the devil to keep trying to snatch you, but know that God has you firmly in his grip. I encourage you to reach out to your local church or reach out to women world leaders and commit to growing in the Lord. God bless you. Thanks for listening to Women World Leaders Podcast. Join us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we explore together God's extravagant love and your courageous purpose. Visit our website at www.womenworldleaders.com to submit a prayer request, register for an upcoming event, and support the ministry. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written consent.